So our story begins with Bardock stretching out his limbs on a planet far into the realms of our galaxy. His nimble Saiyan physique on show for us all, remaining silent as he stares without blinking. But soon a cocky smirk comes across his face as he cracks one of his knuckles and lets out, So, you're who they sent to fight. Well, that's fine by me. You're not the first, and you certainly won't be the last to try their luck. But are you sure this is really the way you want to go out? A more serious expression then comes to Bardock's face as he continues, Look, I'll level with you. I couldn't be less interested in fighting a weakling like you. Just give me what I want, and I'll leave this planet right now. And that'll be the end of it. I'll even let you escape before Freezer arrives. And trust me, you don't want to be dealing with him. So the choice is yours. <laughs> Why you? However, in response, the alien warrior, who bears a striking resemblance to Pui Pui, balls up his fists in anger, pure hatred in his eyes as he stares back at Bardock, incensed at the words that just came out of his mouth then angrily saying, Weakling! How dare you! You damn invader! Look at what you have made me bear witness to! You came here uninvited! You slaughtered my entire planet while they could do nothing to save themselves! And then, you have the audacity to propose these terms to me?! Do you take me for a fool? Why would I ever believe you?! And still enraged as spit flies from his mouth, he continues, You must not understand the gravity of the situation you have found yourself in. What lies beyond here are treasures of our people stretching back millennia. To a time, you and your dirty Saiyan race were still probably dwelling in caves. Listen to me and listen good. Under no circumstances, no matter what, Will I ever let you pass? The Pui Pui Light Warrior then points menacingly at Bardock, as though the very act itself would cause him harm. Bardock, however, as expected, doesn't budge an inch, nor does he react, simply standing there with his arms folded, as though this was just another day in his life. <laughs> Emotions now boiling over, the warrior is off his feet, running at speed towards Bardock, closing the distance between them within a matter of seconds. Yeah! But just as he gets close to Bardock, he throws a left hand, hoping to land, but instead, his fist meets thin air, as an afterimage of Bardock vanishes from the spot. Huh? What magic is this? leaving the warrior gobsmacked in Bardock's dust until... In a heartbeat, the alien's face is sent moving sideways, spewing blood as a familiar fist arrives to make contact out of nowhere. The warrior is left completely blindsided. He looks around, desperately trying to locate where the attack came from, but he's bleeding heavily from the mouth. His jaw, probably broken, but the warrior doesn't pay it any attention. His focus is still on Bardock and figuring out what just happened. As he yells out, <coughs> What the hell? How's he doing this? Why can't I see what's... <coughs> but yet again, he barely gets to finish his sentence before another attack is upon him. A foot comes right for his abdomen kicking him in the stomach hard, this time spitting blood right into the direction of Bardock. <sighs> After this, the Pui Pui lookalike can only groan in pain, slowly slinking to his knees, unable to stand the pain anymore. And with his body crumbling before him, viscous blood dripping from his mouth and teeth like fat off a roast, and his left eye sporting a massive bruise as it fights to stay open, he can only finally comment, You... You will pay for this saying! You and all of Freezer's damn grunts! Just come out and fight like a man, why won't you? Dramatic whoosh, 
behind the warrior, with even him noticing, Bardock suddenly arrives like a silent assassin, ready to finish his kill. No! No wait, I was kidding! Too late now! You should be careful what you wish for, fish face! With a swift but devastating blow, the unrivaled Saiyan Bardock lands smack with both hands clenched together right on top of his opponent's head, brutally slamming his jaw into the ground below as he does so. Then calmly, as gentle as a cat, Bardock then lands on the ground with a minor thud, before immediately turning his back, thinking instead one track mindedly towards his actual goal, commenting, Alright, enough of that. I've had more than my fill of fun beating you weaklings. Time to find this treasure King Vegeta kept going on about. And with that, he walks away callously without a care in the world, as his victim lays on the ground now more than likely deceased, and blood foaming from his mouth creating a mini crimson puddle. And so Bardock walks forward towards a darkened cave where the only light in the pitch black darkness is shining upon a wooden treasure box, quaintly sitting on some kind of man-made mound. Bardock edges closer to it, his curiosity getting the better of him, until eventually, without fear of booby trap, Bardock opens the box carefully and nestled inside is none other than a Black Star Dragon Ball. It shines back at him, catching the light from outside the cave and his first thoughts are, Hmm, well this is a strange thing to find. This is what all the fuss was about. Still curious, he picks up the Dragon Ball and cups it in the palm of his hand, getting a good feel of it. He analyzes it, staring at it from all angles, trying to get a better sense of what it may be. But eventually, it's clear he isn't impressed at neither its look nor craftsmanship, and looking down at it, he then says, <laughs> that fish face went through all of that trouble, that pain, to die at my hands for just this? This simple rock? Is this what his life was really worth? What an odd species the people of this planet are. Anyway, what does Vegeta or Freezer even want with this? What does it do? Guess I'll have to find out later. And satisfied of his findings, Bardock places the ball back, grips the treasure box under his arm and steps out from the cave, thinking to himself as he does so, Alright, mission accomplished. Can't wait to go back and have Gine cook me up a feast. I wonder if Kakarot's up yet. But just as he enters into the open field, he runs into the rest of his team of Saiyans that were also dispatched to which Bardock commands, <laughs> and look who finally decided to show their faces when the job's all done. To which Taro responds, ha, come on Bardock, you know we worked our bots off here, leaving their commander to just respond, <laughs> just kidding, I've got what we came for, the mission is complete, now head back, we're leaving now. And just like that, the five Saiyans of Bardock's team shoot off back to their ships, leaving the now desolate planet behind them. Some time then passes, and we find the group now in the royal throne room of King Vegeta. It's a lavish throne room with large pillars that reach high into the heavens, with three large steps centered in the room that hold the throne. And sitting there is none other than Vegeta the Third himself. We see King Vegeta clasp the Dragon Ball Bardock retrieved, in his hand so tight it seems like he's trying to stop it from escaping. It seems he can hardly believe he finally has it in his hand, staring at the Dragon Ball with shock and awe letting out, Amazing Bardock, if only you had any idea what you had just done, I have waited for this moment for so long. He then looks to Bardock directly and continues emphatically, This is one of the legendary wishing orbs that Freezer has desired for centuries, Bardock. 
I have never known anyone to want such an object so strongly. And supposedly, when seven of these are gathered, anything can be accomplished. He promised me, with their power, the Saiyans would be granted unlimited wealth and resources, and that he would no longer need us for planetary invasion. You know what that means, right Bardock? It means we would be free! Free from Frieza, and able to guarantee the survival of our race for millennia to come. I must say, you and your team performed flawlessly. Your efforts do not go unrecognized, both as a team and you as a commander, Bardock. Bardock, hearing these compliments, almost doesn't know what to say, just remaining quiet, absorbing the praise. Until suddenly, the tone shifts and King Vegeta stands from his throne to face Bardock with a serious face. Not giving a single thing away facially, he then says, You, Bardock, you, my Saiyan brother, are a rare quality. Something I could have never foreseen. You are merely a low-class warrior by birth. But even among us, I would be hard-pressed to find an elite warrior who could defeat you. You are easily ranked in the best of our warriors, the best of the best. However, something has come to my attention recently, a new mission for you, one I can only entrust to you. <coughs> a mission that's only for me. Immediately, Bardock's interest is piqued. Never before has the king shown even a hint of interest in a low-class warrior. But now, all of a sudden, Bardock has been given a mission personally by the king. What could it even be? But before Bardock can inquire any more, King Vegeta bends his head down to talk quieter to Bardock and says, But I'm afraid the details are top secret. I need to talk to you in private about this. Bardock instantly then turns to his team. Still in his mind, he thinks, Top secret? A top secret mission for me? Before quickly turning his head and dismissing his team saying, Yo, you lot, good work today. Next team meal is on me. Now get out of here. We'll debrief our headquarters. To which instantly all five members close their eyes and bow yelling, Yes sir! Before leaving. Now that the two were alone, King Vegeta then turns his back to Bardock and closes his eyes, silently momentarily before explaining further, I know this may be surprising for you, but your ability alone has made me consider you for this mission. It will require all of your skills and more, potentially the most difficult undertaking of your entire life. Again. Bardock continues to look at him with peak intrigue, waiting to hear what it could possibly be. As King Vegeta then turns to face him, recommences, I wouldn't ask this if I didn't have to, but your skills have preceded you. This mission will test you mentally and physically to the limit, but I promise you, the reward is great. If you successfully complete this mission, I shall see to it that a promotion to elite rank may very well be in your future. Imagine it, Elite Saiyan Bardock! And instantly, and maybe surprisingly to some, Bardock's eyes are comedically filled with stars, completely taken in by the dreams and possibilities King Vegeta is selling, as he mutters, M me An Elite Saiyan? His face soon then returns to normal, however, now just with a beaming smile and his fist raised as he inquires further. All right, my lord, I'm sold. What is it you need me to do? Who do you want me to kill? What planet do you want me to conquer? If there's a fight out there, I won't ever back down if it's for the sake of our people. Lay it on me, king. And with a solemn face and his eyes firmly shut, King Vegeta takes a short breath before finally revealing... <sighs> Your mission is... to escort my son, 
Prince Vegeta today! <laughs> uh, he didn't just say what I think he said, did he? But understandably, the anticlimactic reveal leaves Bardock less than impressed, as his face comedically morphs, and all he can say is, Escort the Prince. That is the big mission you wanted me to do. The mission only I could do. What is the meaning of this, my king? Bardock's demeanor then continues to change as his eye begins to twitch and he imagines exactly what this will entail. Continuing, So, to become an elite Saiyan, you want me to basically babysit that little brat? I haven't had time to do that to my own kid, let alone someone else's. Surely, there's somebody else you can put up to this. I just want to fight! But King Vegeta isn't having any of it especially the mention of his son just being any old brat, and quickly reasserts his authority, waving his finger around and explaining, Now listen here, Bardock! I somewhat understand your concern, but you have gotten this mistaken! This is no mere babysitting of a child! This brat is your prince and future king! The heir to the throne, and with a power level like no other for his age! When he is older, there is no telling what monstrous strength he will wield. There will be none who can even stand in his way. Huh. Even Frieza wouldn't have seen it coming. King Vegeta then continues, And as for you being the only one who could do this, you know as well as I do, I'd usually select you for something far more dangerous. But unfortunately, his regular escort, Nappa, has been ordered by Frieza to fight on a distant planet. He won't be back for a while, and in the meantime, I need you to take his place. I'm sorry, but my hands are tied. Now with a smirk on his face, he attempts to comfort Bardock with a hand on his shoulder, and says, But make no mistake, Bardock! This is still the most important mission of your life to date, warrior. There is nobody else that would be better suited. I want you to teach the young Vegeta how to be a powerful warrior like you. That regardless of rank and society, no matter what, with hard work, he can surpass anyone. Bardock, I entrust this mission to you. Alright, I'm gonna go now. The prince will probably be down in a few minutes. Be ready to greet him formally. And good luck! What? Instantly leaving Bardock in a state of panic, as the king abruptly leaves just seconds after beginning to win Bardock over to the idea. <laughs> With the king now gone, Bardock's annoyance and rage begins to build, as he folds his arm and clenches his teeth, only being able to grumble out, Now how did finding a weird ball lead me into this mess? That's the last time I do a mission for Frieza. Was looking forward to Gine's food, but now I have to deal with a toddler. And a royally stuck up one I bet too. Huh? But just as Bardock finishes predicting what the young prince will be like, a foreign object knocks him on the head. Bardock turns his head and thinks, Now what the hell was that? This place falling apart already or something? Is that... Is that fruit? Soon seeing on the floor a half-eaten apple slowly rolling across the surface. Surely someone didn't just throw that at the feared Saiyan commander Bardock. But as Bardock's anger begins to build, a pair of small feet begin to walk closer and closer to the Saiyan from in front. Standing there as Bardock follows the feet up is none other than Prince Vegeta back in his youthful days, holding yet another apple, explaining where the last one came from. Bardock though, in seemingly a forgiving mood, just thinks to himself, Hmm, so that's King Vegeta's son. He's a spitting image, just like Kakarot is to me. I wonder what he'll be like. 
but the young Vegeta just smirks menacingly and lets out, So, what exactly are you doing down here, peasant? Oh, I get it. You're supposed to be Nappa number two or something, aren't you? <laughs> but you're so much smaller. Guess that means you're just that much weaker too. What did he say? But of course, once Bardock hears this, his rage is built up instantly, as the levels of disrespect take him completely off guard. He grits his teeth inside and closes his mouth, trying his best to hold his fury in as he thinks to himself, Me! Small and weak! This midget has the gall to say that to me? I wonder how quickly I'd be killed if I taught this kid a lesson here and now. Damn royalty. But eventually, Bardock sucks up his pride and bows courteously in front of the young prince and says begrudgingly, Good morning, my prince. My apologies for not noticing you sooner. My name is Bardock, and from now on to further notice, I will be your new escort. At least until Napper is back from his mission, that is. Feel free to request of me anything you desire. Kid Vegeta, however, is still unimpressed, saying, Oh, is that so, Bardock? Before throwing the apple down and disrespectfully crushing it flat underneath his foot. Now inexplicably getting into fighting stance, Vegeta continues, Anything I desire, you say? So be it. I want to fight then. Rumor has it that you're a low-class warrior, not fit to even be in this room and speak to me, let alone to escort me. You are here on my father's orders, and that means you must obey my orders too. Now, entertain me and show me just how weak you are, low-class scum. Huh? Bardock, though, just looks back at Vegeta more confused than angry, commenting, Low-class scum? What's wrong with this kid? Who taught him to even talk like that? <laughs> but suddenly, as Bardock ponders, Kid Vegeta randomly shows why he got into fighting stance and launches up Bardock with his fists clenched, ready to show the world just why the king has so much faith in his power. Yeah! But unfortunately, even with his eyes closed, Bardock only has to move a few inches in order to completely make the young Vegeta miss embarrassingly. As the young prince thinks, How? How did I miss? There's no way he dodged me. While Bardock comments, Hey kid, can we not do this right now? I'm tired from work. Yeah! What? But yet again, Bardock only needs to knock his head back to make the royal sins completely miss the target. This is ridiculous! But undeterred, the little Saiyan carries on, showing us all where Vegeta's never give up attitude first came from. Again missing though, with Bardock now with his arms on his hips, totally fed up. How about this? And even when on the floor trying to sweep Bardock, all the older Saiyan needed to do was just momentarily raise his foot. This? This is ridiculous! I am the prince of all Saiyans, and you are a low-class weakling! Stand still and do something instead of running! Yeah! But as Vegeta's final punch misses, Bardock hearing the prince's words, has no choice but to oblige, grabbing the young Saiyan's tail and saying quietly, As you wish, my prince, but don't blame me if you don't like this. <laughs> as instantly, Bodok, as if slamming a pillow onto the ground, smashes the prince head first onto the concrete like he was a mere ragdoll, leading to Vegeta screaming in pain. As the prince raises his head from the now dent on the floor, blood begins to trickle down his face. As well disorientated, he thinks to himself, How? What happened? 
One minute I had him on the back foot, and the next, I was out cold! What?! But as he opens his eyes, and looks at his now blood-stained hand, a look of complete shock comes across his face, as he yells out, Blood! My blood! No one has ever made me bleed! How dare you! Do you have any idea what father will do to you when he hears about this? You'll pay! You! What? I'll pay, huh? Say that again for me, kid. But standing there intimidatingly, surrounded in a strange aura, and looking down at the now panicking kid Vegeta, is Bardock. Looking as if he's ready to bet it all, and teach the young prince a lesson he'll never forget. And now cracking his fingers, readying himself properly, he lets out, So, I'm low class scum, huh? And a weakling because of that, right? Interesting. Well, why don't we put that to the test right now? Royalty versus scum. We'll both use our full powers, and we'll see who comes out on top. All right, my prince? A good old-fashioned Saiyan battle to the death. <laughs> Leaving a now close to peeing in his pants Vegeta to just stumble back slowly and mutter, <laughs> Power! Battle to the... Death. But that was it for today's video guys and if you made it this far leave me a hashtag continue in the comments down below if you want me to carry this story on and in colour again. This is my first coloured manga and it's not cheap to make so please consider supporting me on my Patreon to get this funded and released ASAP from just $3 and on top of that gain a ton of manga goodies in return also. It's the deal of the century.